in this video we'll start with the basic BGP configurations like if you remember we have done most of the IGP configurations in our previous videos we have some we added some IBGP configurations using full mesh and then also using route reflectors and then we have also used peer groups and update source low back zero changing the source address a lot of things so all those things are relating to our IBGP configuration so in this section we'll move on with some very basic EBGP configuration so when you come to EBGP configurations the entire configuration commands remains the same only the thing is we just need to change the autonomous system number so let's get started here so I'm going to start with router 1 if I verify everything is pre-configured with the IP addresses as per my default topology and if I verify I don't have any BGP running and I don't have any of the other routing protocol running so only the thing I have is a very basic IP addressing as per my diagram so I'm going to configure EBGP the IBGP and EPGP now I got a diagram here you can see in this diagram I got three routers and I'm planning to configure these two routers it will be a part of autonomous system number 500 and then this router will be in the AS of 600 so we don't have any uh, route reflectors those things so we just have a plain configurations now we need to configure router 2 router 2 is the router which is forming EBGP neighborship with router 3 because the router 3 is in a different AS and also it is forming IBGP neighborship with router 1 because they are in the same AS and the router 1 only form neighborship with router 2 because router 1 just need to establish a neighborship with the routers within the same AS and from router 1 to 3 we don't have any any EBGP required so we are not going to do that and the router 3 also forms only one EBGP session so let us see the configurations here so I'll start with router BGP router 1 I'm going to run router 1 in the AS 500 I'm going to say no auto summary no synchronization and then I'll say neighbor 1.1.1.2 which is my router 2 and then I'm going to say AS 500 so my autonomous system number and the neighbor autonomous system number are same now the router will understand that it is my internal BGP neighbor after that I'm going to address my 10 dot network which is my LAN interface and also I'm advertising my WAN interface so I got only two interfaces required as per my diagram the one dot network and ten dot network with the default subnet mask done now similar way if I go to router 2 on the router 2 I have to configure two neighbor commands and the router 2 is running autonomous system 500 no auto summary no synchronization and then I'm going to say neighbor 1.1.1.1 and then remote AS is uh, 500 and then neighbor 2.2.2.2 which is my router 3 remote AS is 600 now you can see here my autonomous system number is 500 and I'm going to peer with router 1 which is also 500 so the router 2 will treat this as same AS nothing but it's an IBGP neighborship and when it comes to router 3 it's going to treat it as EBGP neighbors because of different autonomous system numbers and then I'm going to advertise my LAN interface the router to LAN interface and WAN interfaces done so on the router 2 I just configured two neighbors very basic and then I'm going to advertise my LAN interface and two WAN interfaces on the router 3 also I'm going to do the same thing now router 3 is running autonomous system number 600 and then I'm going to say no auto summary, no synchronization. Neighbor 2.2.2.1, which is my router 2. Remote AS is 500. And then I'm going to advertise my LAN interface. 30 dot network. And then one WAN interface. Done. So now, once we finish configuration of this basic neighbors and network commands the first thing we need to verify is the neighborship so we will go and check on the router 2 because router 2 should have two neighbors if I give show IP BGB summary I should see the neighborship should come up from both the ends now router 1 the neighborship is already up on the other end now the neighborship between router 3 is also up now just now and you can see here 
from each neighbor I'm going to receive two two routes and if I verify swipe with BGP I can see all the routes so this output I'll get into more in detail when we come to the path selection process and if I verify on the router 3 if I get show IP route BGP or I can see the routes coming from router 2 as well as from router 1 and this is the connected interface between router 1 and router 2 so I'm able to get the routes and if you see the routing table here you can see 20 because all these routes on the router 3 are coming from router 2 which is my external BGP neighbor so which means any routes coming from external BGP neighbor it has the default administrative distance of 20 which is more preferred than uh, if you are learning the routes from the same OSPF or EHRP also this is more preferred now the same thing if I check on the router 2 if I give show IP route BGP on the router 2 you can see 10 dot network is coming from router 1 which is in the same AS the default administrative distance is 200 and the 30 dot network is coming from router 3 which is having the administrative distance of 20 so because this is route is learned from external BGP neighbor so the default administrative distance for any eBGP route will be having a 20 and any routes learned from the internal BGP neighbor will have the administrative distance of 200 because internally within the same AS we always want OSPF EHRP or RIP protocols which are IGP protocols we want those protocols to prefer so that's the reason internally BGP is not uh, will not be used for the selection of the best route but BGP is specially designed for XTJ gateway protocol and this next hop you can see it's 2.2.2.2 if I go to router 1 if I verify the routes I'm able to see the routes but you can see the 30 dot network the next hop is uh, not router 2 that is 1.1.1.2 it is 2.2.2.2 so regarding this I'll explain you in my next video because there is a default rule in the BGP next stop behavior we'll see more in detail in our next video so from this lab we can uh, understand some of the basic very basic eBGP configurations and if you see the configurations of router if I verify the configurations of any router let's say on the router 2 I'm going to verify the configurations look similar to your normal IBGP configurations except changing the AS number that's it 